leader, Paul Nuttall, who joins us now. Paul Nuttall, very good afternoon to you. Uh, I'm guessing you're pretty chuffed today. There's the Prime Minister saying pretty explicitly that we are leaving the single market. We're effectively leaving the customs union as well. Uh, you must be chuffed. Uh, pretty much, yes. Uh, some of it did sound like a UKIP conference speech, and she's now applying some of the things that we've been talking about for many, many years. Of course, if we leave the single market, we'll be able to protect our own borders. We shouldn't be paying a membership fee into the European Union, although there did seem to be a slight caveat on that when mm. Theresa May said we won't be paying huge or vast amounts of money into the European Union coffers, which leaves a little bit of wriggle room. My only concern is that what we're getting is some sort of slow motion Brexit where she is speaking about interim measures or a phasing or transitional period, which will only begin after April 2019. Well, she said they'd be capped, so let's didn't not forget. She, 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 she said she was, she was aware of the danger of it just yeah, yeah, but going you, but on. She, yeah, but she hasn't given us any end date about these transitional measures. And I challenge the Prime Minister, let's have this all done and clean before the next general election in 2020. But on a positive note, I'd probably give a 7 out of 10 today. Uh, just on the money, you mentioned the money. You're quite right. The exact, the exact quote, I made a note of it myself. She said, the days of the UK making vast contributions, brackets to the EU budget, will end. What would be a price worth paying? Uh, to secure, for instance, elements of the customs union, such that, for instance, we could send cars from Nissan and Sunderland directly into the customs union without yep. paying a 10% surcharge. What would, be, what would be a price worth paying, given our current budget uh, uh, net is nine billion a year? A, a, a billion? A couple of billion? Well, do you know why that surcharge won't happen and why the whole argument around the car industry is a nonsense? It's because we produce around 5 million cars in Britain every single year. 2.6 million of those cars are built by German companies. And the German, German car manufacturing industry is the most important industry in Germany, and we are its biggest marketplace outside of Germany. 800,000 cars were sold into Britain last year. We are the French farmers' biggest marketplace outside of France. 39 billion, 8 million bottles of champagne last year alone. There will be a free trade deal on the table. It's mutually beneficial for Britain and the European Union because let's not forget, you know, I'm in Strasbourg here in the EU. There are six million jobs on the continent which are dependent on British trade. We will get that deal and the big, big, big news is that Britain will now be able to say it, sign its own trade deals across the globe yeah. with India, China, Australia, and the big one, the United States. Donald well, I mean, Trump has already said we will be at the front of the queue when it comes to a trade deal. Other people have already decided the big, big news is that the House of Commons and the House of Lords will get to vote on any final Brexit deal. Is mm. it your worry that actually, ultimately, maybe not the House of Commons, but the House of Lords might vote against yeah. the Brexit deal? Of course, that is a worry, because if they vote against it, then we're back to where we began in the first place. It's a bit like snakes and ladders, but, you know, woe betide the House of Lords if they vote this down. You know, we will be back to 107 years ago to another election called the peers versus the people, and I guarantee the people will win. And the House of Lords could well sign its own death one. So I don't think that will happen, but woe betide any MP who votes against this, and certainly will betide the House of Lords if it tries to meddle with Brexit. Do you get the sense, Paul Nuttall, that things are becoming a little more uh, gritty now in terms of these negotiations? Not necessarily in reference to what Theresa May had to say today, but Philip Hammond, in the last few days, gave a, an interview with a German newspaper in which he talked about how the economic model might change. And some people saw that as a hint that we might, in this country, cut our corporation tax. In other words, we're threatening our uh, European neighbours. We're saying, if you don't give us a deal that we want, we'll cut corporation tax so low yeah. that companies that hitherto have decided to move to France or Germany or Italy will come here instead. Yeah, and, and, and good on Philip Hammond for saying that because, you know, we've been get, getting threatened over the past couple of months by the European Commission and indeed heads of state like Francois Hollande and we've said nothing. You know, at least now we're biting back and saying, look, Britain has got teeth, Britain has got clout, Britain is the fifth largest economy in the world. We have a huge trading deficit with the EU. They need us more than we need them. So, yes, I'm glad we're getting hard about this. I'm glad we're standing up 
to the Euro mandarins in Brussels and the European heads of state. You know, we've got a great future in this country now as a result of Brexit. We can look forward, confident as a free democratic state, into the 21st century, and we'll hand on a Britain Paul, to our children and our grandchildren, yeah, Paul, which is better and more prosperous than, than the one we're in today. Got to leave it there, I'm afraid. Paul Nuttall, thanks very much. Just quickly, just let me mention that the pound has